So, let's examine the golden rules for selecting related texts. Now, if you follow these rules, it's going to take what might seem like a daunting and never ending task of sifting through every text on earth maybe to find the perfect related text and really narrowing it down to finding a related text which is going to be suitable and appropriate. So the first rule is that the text type should be different from your prescribed text and from your other additional material choice. This is going to provide you with variation and really make sure that you demonstrate to the marker that you have a solid view across text types. So for example, if your text in class is a Shakespearean play, you're not going to choose another one for your related text. You might choose a short story and a movie. So you have three very different types of text which you can compare and contrast. The second rule is that you should have one older classic and also a contemporary classic. So an older classic is really a very old-fashioned text which is tried and proven to be a really great piece of literature. Whereas a contemporary classic is something in the last 50 years or so which has also been proven to be an excellent text of a high quality. So you should have about a range of at least 50 years to ensure that these classic texts and these high quality texts which you've chosen also have grounds which you can contrast them for. You want to be looking for texts which have won big awards. This is the way that you can decide that yes, this is a good text, other people agree with me. So you're looking for things like the Booker Prize and the Academy Award. The third rule is that a complex additional material is easier to use than a simpler one. So while you might think that something really easy and basic is going to make your life so much easier because there's so little to analyse, so little to learn, at the end of the day, you're really just shooting yourself in the foot because you're not going to have enough material to work with and to answer the questions with. So this means that you want to be looking at texts that have complex themes, which you can really grasp and evaluate well. It also means that you have to have texts which have the ability to address multiple questions. So texts that bridge different themes rather than just looking at one sub theme of your area of study. This also means that you want to be avoiding cartoons, children's books and short poems because these are things which really just aren't going to provide the length which is necessary for a sophisticated related text analysis. So these are just the black things which you should just avoid, which should set off alarm bells in your head as things which you should not be studying for your related texts. The fourth rule is that your additional material should have one strong link to your prescribed text but everything else should be different. So what this means is that your related text not only supports your set text, but also has something new to say. This means that you continually use links to say text A discusses this, text B also discusses this, as well as discussing this next idea. And it, that actually really helps you in providing a structure for a sort of flow on essay style. The fifth golden rule is the things which you should avoid choosing. And these are the following things. Editorials, advertisements, feature articles, cartoons, song lyrics, non-fiction texts, Shakespeare. This is basically because these texts all have something wrong about them, which mean that as an English student at your level, you're not going to be analysing them completely successfully. So this might mean they're too simple, so they're below your ability. For example, cartoons or a song lyric. So you want to be showing off your ability. It could mean that they're too complicated, such as a Shakespearean play. On your own, you might not really be able to analyse them yourself. They could have too few techniques, such as perhaps an editorial, which is relatively basic, or they could be too pedestrian and boring. So things which the markers have seen before or which just don't push the boundaries enough for you to write a really interesting essay. The sixth area is that you should avoid pop culture or teen and children's books or films. So while these might be the things which like out of school you really enjoy, these are things which as related texts they really just don't work based on the fact that they're so much in society and everyone knows them so well. They're just either too simple or too obvious a choice. So this means that you should avoid Twilight 
and also Harry Potter, anything which is particularly famous like that. Movies like Transformers, anything Disney, and also anime. So while these might be things that you personally enjoy, as we've said, just because you enjoy them doesn't mean they're relevant. So this is your guide to using additional material. And there are multiple approaches in which you can take a task which might seem quite daunting and deal with it in a really approachable way. So basically what you want to be achieving at the end of the day is a 60-40 split between your set text and your related material. So you wanna be spending 60% of your essay on your class text, 20% on your first related text, and then 20% on your second related text. This means that you'll probably have about two paragraphs for each related text which you produce. Firstly, it's really important that you provide a link between your set text and your related material. You can't have just a disjointed essay which deals with different texts but doesn't really draw them together. So you either need to do this by choosing themes which you can see running across the text or doing things like linking sentences. So like as seen in the previous text, this text also addresses this theme. Secondly, your new idea related to area of study needs to be in each related text and you need to bring this out in perhaps the second paragraph which you write about that te related text. 